What's up everybody, this is Danny and today I'm in beautiful Hawaii and I'm going to be doing the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra Snapdragon versus Exynos camera comparison. So I did the S21 Ultra here last year and what a beautiful environment to do this year's camera comparison. So after all of the updates, which camera is now the better camera? I think this is gonna be really interesting. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's start with the daytime pictures. I left scene optimizer on to make things fair and every image and video was shot in auto mode. Both of these phones have their latest software updates installed. So let me show you the differences that I saw while using these two different processor variants. If you don't know, depending on where you live, you get a different processor. I wish Samsung would just go with one chipset, but it is what it is. I know some people won't care, but I know a lot of people want to know if the Exynos got any better with the updates or if Snapdragon is still just better all around. There are some surprising results, so make sure you watch this one all the way through. As you would have guessed, there are some differences in daytime processing. Some shots look pretty much identical like this one, but then there are some that are noticeably different with sky color rendition, contrast, and shadow detail. I did notice that a lot of the times the Exynos versions favors heavier contrast, so that will be personal preference. You can see in this ultra wide shot, the trees are darker where you get more shadow detail in the Snapdragon. Here's another example. Take a look at this area here. You can see more of the greenery where the Exynos tends to crush those areas a little more, but it does go back and forth. But in drastic mixed lighting conditions, I do prefer the Snapdragon rendition of this scene better. Where that heavier contrast does win sometimes in the Exynos though is in the highlight control. The Snapdragon S22 Ultra prioritized my kids in the foreground to sacrifice overall dynamic range, which does not look good in the clouds, but the Exynos balanced the overall scene better. And while it's not perfect, some editing could make this a usable photo. You can see it here again when my daughter was walking down into the submarine, which was super cool by the way, but her white clothing is much better controlled on the Exynos straight out of the camera. But honestly, it does go back and forth. Look at this picture where the Exynos gives me more shadow detail all around, where the Snapdragon is processing more contrast. And then in this shot, walking onto the submarine, there is more shadow detail on the Snapdragon. And there are some drastic differences like this where the Exynos just fails on HDR. So there'll be variations depending on the scene. But if I had to call the general daytime photos when it comes to consistency, I would still give it to the Snapdragon. I found despite the back and forth on some photos, it was more likely to give you a better photo. Again, it depends on preference and if you like the brighter rendition, you might like the Exynos better. But take a look at here at the metal on these. The details are there and you can see the wrinkles in the bed better in this lighting. There is more contrast on the Snapdragon in this scenario, but is more accurate to the scene. The shadow bump on the Exynos is definitely more pleasing to the eye, but when you start inspecting the picture, take a look at how much more detail is picked up by the Snapdragon on the typewriter. From the sharpness and texture detail on the metal to the text, the Exynos looks generally softer all around. And I took a ton of pictures inside the submarine and I saw pretty much the same result everywhere. If you like the ready to share sharper image out of the camera, you're going to like the Snapdragon better. I tested the 108 megapixel mode to make sure that there wasn't a huge difference between the two, but the results seem about the same. If you crop into the metal here, the Exynos looks softer again. This one is a really good example to show you what the differences are in 108 megapixel mode. On the 300% scale crop, you can start to see the difference because again, the Snapdragon just looks more crisp all around. But when you punch into the drastic 1000% scale crop, take a look at the dials. It's a night and day difference. And look at the green table. All of that detail is preserved on the Snapdragon version. So that is something to keep in mind if you use this mode a lot. Macro mode, I also found it to be the same. They both do a good job, but I found the Snapdragon to have a slight advantage here again. Exynos here does have more sharpness in the center, so that's awesome. But the Snapdragon is sharper from edge to edge. So let me know which one that you like better. When taking pictures super up close, I saw more detail on the Snapdragon again. If you're a fan of macro photography, then you might wanna lean towards the Snapdragon model. I tested these cameras in all different conditions like sunset on the beach, and they both do a fantastic job here, just slight differences in saturation. But in this one, directly against the sun, the Snapdragon is showing higher dynamic range, controlling the sun and picking up the golden hour color better on the sand too. But it's not all doom and gloom for the Exynos. I did find that the Exynos does better on human subjects. Look at this front facing camera shot. So much better on skin tone and highlight control. So that is a big win. 
here is a portrait mode selfie and this one is really close and I wouldn't blame you if you like the Snapdragon more but the skin tone and color is more accurate on the Exynos. And speaking of portrait mode, this is again where the Exynos really shines in my opinion. When you look at this portrait photo quickly, you might not notice a big difference, but when you punch in, you can see that the Exynos is sharper and the details on the hat are incredible. I do like the Snapdragon's bouquet roll off on the portrait mode a little bit better, though it does look more gradual in this scenario on the front facing camera. But this 3x portrait mode shot, the Exynos shows better balance with dynamic range and skin tone. And again, it wouldn't be a camera comparison if they didn't go back and forth. Here the Snapdragon one looks more balanced, but I do like the highlight control on the Exynos and it does preserve the blowout on the skin better from harsh lighting. But this is the infamous sunglasses portrait mode test and the Exynos did fail altogether where the Snapdragon wasn't perfect, but it did a much better job. I know that you guys would probably yell at me in the comments if I didn't do an extensive zoom test because the S22 Ultra is still arguably the best zoom smartphone on the market. When you look at the 3x zoom, the differences really can't be seen as well. But when you get into the 10x, look at how much clearer and sharper the Snapdragon is. I took a ton of these, so let me know if you can see the clear difference. That's the 3x from my balcony. The 10x zoom here is the closest out of all of the images that I took, but the Snapdragon is slightly sharper when looking at the tiles. Here is the full range. There is the main sensor, then the 3x, which looks really similar, the 10x optical, which now you can start to see where the Exynos is starting to look a little softer. On the 30x, they are both starting to get oil painty, but the Snapdragon image is much more usable. And here is the 100x just for fun. Both of them don't look great, but 100x on a smartphone is still amazing to have. This is a much more practical scenario. I saw fish from the bridge, which you really can't see well from the main sensor shot, but here is the 3x. The Exynos really impressive with the details underneath the water, so I'm really impressed by that. But here is the 10x zoom shot. The fish looks so much clearer, and while they are both usable shots, if you're a fan of zoom, I'd go with the Snapdragon. Last thing before moving on to low light, let's take a look at the video. The color replication is definitely going to be preference based. The Exynos giving more contrast here and a more dramatic look to the water, which you might like and I wouldn't blame you at all, but the Snapdragon was more accurate to the scene if you care about that. Here is a full range video test in 4K 30 frames per second. This is from the ultra wide from the back of a boat. This was a test done handheld. There is the transition to the main sensor, which was smooth on both of them frame rates are looking solid. There is the 3x zoom. Video stabilization is also looking similar here too. And then there is the 10x zoom video where the stabilization starts to fall apart on both. The Snapdragon is doing a better job of stabilizing the video. So take that for what it's worth if you're shooting a lot of scumbag video. So let's get into the low light photos. This one surprised me a little bit because generally the Exynos model does produce the brighter picture with about the same exposure time. Some of the results like this aren't so drastic and more subtle, but take a look at this beach shot. It is completely dark here. So you can see this by the single snapshot, but when night mode is engaged, the Exynos really turned up on this one. The white balance might be a little too cool, but wow, that is a great result. The Snapdragon normally gives you a more accurate shot. There is warm lighting coming from the torches around the area and the resort, so that is more realistic. But look at this test in the sand. Again, a really great testing ground because I really couldn't see much in real life. But there is the Snapdragon pulling in those warmer tones and the Exynos with the cooler, but the Exynos version is more usable. Here is another one of those shots, the Exynos with the slightly brighter image. When you punch in though, the details seem to be very similar. So this is a great thing if you own the Exynos model. I found that most of these night mode shots, the Exynos did a little better job with the shadow detail. Take a look at here. And when you punch in, while the Snapdragon does have slightly better noise control in the overall image, this is a lot closer than I expected. Now, if you do use more single snap shooting without night mode, I think the Snapdragon still has the better experience. They are both noisy, but the details are retained better in the Snapdragon. Night mode is so close between the two models, I don't think that you'll notice too much if you didn't see them side by side. Here is an image punched in so you can see what they look like. If anything, the trees might look slightly better on the Snapdragon, but these type of minute differences I wouldn't worry about. There are times where the Snapdragon does produce the more detailed picture. Take a look at the rock detail here, but then there are times where the Exynos does the exact same thing. So on photos, this isn't as clear as it was during the day. So keep that in mind. 
Here are some portrait mode shots at night. They both do a great job as well. Again, the Exynos does tend to land on the cool side of white balance, so this will be preference based. If anything, the Exynos again edges out the portrait mode even at night with more detail. Again, if you care about accuracy, the Snapdragon is producing more of what I'm seeing with my own eyes, but I don't blame you for liking the Exynos more in this scenario. Look at the grass and the rocks. It's really impressive. For the front facing camera, it does go back and forth. I like the Snapdragon here in this one. On this picture, the Snapdragon is sharper for sure, but I'm not liking the skin rendition where the Exynos does do a better job, but it's picking up too much red. Here is a more dramatic test out at the beach area. When night mode is kicked in, I prefer the Exynos here. The skin tone is so much better and more accurate. When portrait mode is used, it's the same thing. I prefer the skin on the Exynos, but the Snapdragon is better with preserving my ear where the Exynos just decided to cut it off. I took so many shots here and I'll share more on Instagram, so make sure that you follow me there. But I love this portrait shot from the Snapdragon. The warmth and the portrait mode roll off is fantastic. And if you are a moon shooter, then you will also notice that the Snapdragon does a little better job. But this makes sense because most of the time the zoom is better with the Snapdragon model. Here's a good example of night mode zoom. Here is the main, the 3X, which looks more over sharpened on the Exynos. And then here is the 10X night mode. Less noise on the Snapdragon model with slightly more detail. Sometimes the over sharpening does help on the Exynos though. In this 3X shot, I can't rule out that I might have moved a little on the Snapdragon model while night mode was engaged. So take that for what it's worth. It was really windy outside. The white balance on both are wild, but the Exynos did a better job of keeping the faces sharper. So this one is much closer than I thought it would be, which is good news for the Exynos. The bad news for the Exynos is the low light video in my experience here in Hawaii. The video is generally sharper with less noise on the Snapdragon. Take a look at the trees and the water here. You can really see it. It is so dark here that they both struggle a bit with the frame rate while panning, but the Exynos has more contrast while the Snapdragon does show a little more shadow detail in the building. I did notice though the Snapdragon model for the most part does a better job with keeping the video smooth in really dark scenarios while retaining better video quality, especially during the quick panning scenarios like this. Look at how choppy the Exynos gets. This still needs a lot of work. So on the video side, I think the Snapdragon still wins at night. When you are walking, the Snapdragon also shows better stabilization as well, even though I do like the white balance better on the Exynos. But if you take a lot of video at night, then I would choose the Snapdragon every time. Here's an example of how smooth the zoom is on the video and video samples at each focal length. The ultra wide and the main is better on the Snapdragon, but surprisingly the 3X zoom video looks a little better on the Exynos, so let me know if you can see that. And at 10X zoom, the Snapdragon is a little sharper, but it does have a lot more noise where the Exynos does better with noise reduction, but the stabilization does suffer here. So let me know what you think. So there it is, the Snapdragon versus Exynos camera comparison for the S22 Ultra after updates. It is closer than I thought it would be, and the Exynos is improving, but unfortunately, if you own an Exynos model, it's still not as good as the Snapdragon model. Yes, the images and videos do go back and forth, but for the most part, you will get a better experience on the Snapdragon model, and I hope that this showed you the difference between the two now that the software updates have rolled out and it's been a while since launch. And one more thing to note from a camera performance perspective, the Snapdragon is still smoother with the faster camera app experience overall. So let me know which one that you think took it. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Subscribe for a lot more videos like this one, and I will see you in the next one.